I was bored. I had been to England with Darla, and when I came back to L.A., there wasn't much happening anymore. Things had changed since I came back. Where I was from, the Silver Lake and Los Feliz neighborhoods, had changed dramatically in the few years I was gone. I saw through the pretension of the area, the mind-blowing urban squalor, the new, hip, trendy shops that had popped up while I was gone. A fucking bohemian playpen for the fake, desperate, tattooed artists, all talking about their projects yet never seeming to work on them. I hated everything about it, despised the lame suburbia people, driving in from Westwood or the Valley or wherever, paying money to be hip for a few hours. It just wasn't happening. I couldn't deal. The scene was played out. It was time to move on. So I started checking out this neighborhood I was sort of familiar with, a few miles away. The Pico Crenshaw area. I found this cool apartment and moved in. I liked living in this area because it wasn't too far from where I used to go to school. The fact that I was the only white person in the neighborhood didn't bother me either. Being white always entitled me to privileges that oppressed others. I felt compelled to undo the psychic harm the white breeders have caused. But the main reason why I was happy to be in this neighborhood was because of Jabberjaw. If you are from LA, you've heard of it. Jabberjaw. Thinking of the name would bring a smile to my face. It was the only all-ages club in Los Angeles, and it was only a few blocks away from my new apartment. The coolest bands played, so I thought I'd walk over and check out what was happening. But to my utter horror, I found out that the club was now some kind of security store, and no one had even told me. I didn't know what I'd do with my time at first, I mean, Jabberjaw was where I saw all of these great bands like Slug and That Dog and the Paper Tulips. Bethany and I used to go almost every night it was open. We'd smoke cloves and hang out in the back patio and discuss Proust and Nietzsche and our theories of entitlement in a collective setting. My dad said he'd pay for any college I wanted to go to. So I went to USC for a while and had a double major in film and fine art. It totally sucked. I decided that there were too many rules. I was a rebel. All the best artists are. I marched to my own beat. Not to the rhythm of the shallow masses. I would explain to my instructors that I do things according to the way I feel they need to be done, and they would say, well, you can do that, but you'll still get an F. So I dropped out. Because I like to do what I like to do, and I make no apologies for that. I mean, who is to say that your work has to be understood to be any good? Concept-driven art doesn't require that the outcome really matters. The only thing that matters is the concept the artist has while they're creating the art. If I scribble meaningless drivel on paper, but I am thinking thoughts that would be beyond anything Judy Chicago or Barbara Kruger could come up with, well, that's all that matters, right? I think that the art object is so overrated.
I know my work is wonderful. That's why I never cared about graduate school. I used some of my trust fund to have a gallery owner give me a show once. I mean, it was really cool. We had the writers from Coagula and the LA Weekly come, and all these hip zine people from Flipside and Ben is Dead came. That dog and the Neptunas played. It was quite the scene. If you have the right connections, then why waste time getting a master's degree, right? Euripides stated that we are unclean, thou and I. We have caught the stain of bad men's flesh and dreamed our dreams in vain. I like that quote. It reminds me of why I have this love-hate relationship with men. I think about something Andrea Dworkin said. I can't recall. Anyway, I mean, I like men. I have all of these guy friends. And I think some of them like me. But things just don't seem to work out. These pasty penis people always end up destroying my artistic inner self. I believe in entropy. I mean, shouldn't everything fall apart? Isn't that what's bound to happen? Isn't that the logical progression? What's the opposite of entropy? Is it communism? I feel excited about my life right now. At first I was devastated when Jabberjaw closed, but now I realize that this gives me time to work on my art. And that's pretty much all I do now. There is a purpose. There's some reason for doing everything, even if I don't know what that reason is yet. I always figure that it will come to me, and then one day, I can say I had a reason to do what I did. So I pretty much do whatever I feel like doing, because I know I can justify it eventually. I had a boy inside of me once. He said it would feel good, and it did, but I had to vomit afterwards. I never told anyone but Bethany this, but what I wanted, what I always wanted was to find a beautiful ethnic boy to be my first boyfriend. But it's not easy. It's hard to find men who can live up to the right expectations and piss your dad off. I mean, I found one a few years ago, but he wanted to have sex right away and in these weird positions I didn't like. I tried to have a dialogue about how sex should be more than a penetrative act conspiring to a discourse of dominator and dominated, but that's when he told me to shut the hell up and he slapped me. He wasn't a good example of a non-white paramour. My dad said he'd pay for my apartment and give me a $600 monthly allowance, if I didn't bother him. I can deal with that. In a way, it is payment for the many years of patriarchal oppression he foisted upon me. Someone at El Coyote called me a Trustafarian, and I'm like, whatever, I don't even know what that means, so why let it bother me? It doesn't really bother me, you know. I have this spoken word piece that I'm going to do at open mic night at Al's bar next week. It starts out like this. White Anglo-derived religion equals guilt. 
White Anglo-derived culture equals Starbucks. White Anglo-derived architecture equals strip malls. White Anglo-derived sex equals boredom. And white Anglo-derived art equals shit. That's all I wrote so far. I feel that I'm onto something new. Not just in my art, but in my whole attitude. My whole essence of being. It's scary to wonder how I'll be looked at 30 years after I'm dead. I mean, to think that I'll be like Cindy Sherman or Diane Arbus, and that there will be traveling retrospectives of my work in galleries and museums. That's a thought that keeps me going. I have experienced a lot by being here. I may be alone most of the time, but loneliness can be a beautiful thing and I don't believe it is something to fear. Am I made of stone that I feel nothing wrong with being alone? No. Everything we feel and experience helps us grow. We tell ourselves lies all the time. Who am I? What is my purpose in the universe? These are the profound questions that most spend their lives trying to answer and to justify. I feel that I have finally found the answer. The answer was right before me all along. Like Foucault, it wasn't so much the answer as it was the process of finding the answer that has illuminated my search for the truth. The petty bourgeois lifestyle of the mediocre is beneath me. I am an artist. I feel the enlightenment that Nietzsche felt. I am one with the universe.